I get people asking me about my gun collection all the time and I admit to being an addicted collector of all types. I also get asked for more about FACs. This week is a bit of a hybrid of both of those two. My FAC guns and why I chose them. Would I choose differently if I started again? Just a brief interruption to this week's programme. Recently here at AAR we passed the 50,000 subscriber milestone and in the thank you video I hinted that there were going to be some exciting changes. These are now starting. We have always been independent and feel I should stress I have never been paid by any manufacturer or companies in the making of any programmes for the channel. Whilst I'm sure there are lots of people out there who will have probably other thoughts and opinions, I can absolutely assure you no one has paid me for any of these programmes. We have in the past been hooked up with drapers who have, from time to time, loaned us guns for reviewing. Mrs AAR and I then worked hard to help them build their social media marketing profile and it must be stressed we didn't ask for or receive any remuneration for all the time and work involved. Over nearly four years. Well, time has moved on and with the AAR on air website, merchandise, Facebook, Instagram, forums and groups, now taking so much of our time and focus, we will now be devoting more of our time and energy to our social media needs. And in order to ensure we can still bring you high quality independent reviews, we're going to be using more sources to hopefully get hold of new guns and products quicker. So hopefully you'll see the more up-to-date products reviewed sooner. We've sourced some rather attractive locations for future filming as well. We will be working closely with a more local new startup air gun company who have agreed to supply us with products too. We're really looking forward to the changes and we've been working hard to get that broader support network behind us. All this ensures we don't get linked to one of the big name manufacturers, but we maintain a healthy balance of different guns from higher priced down to and probably mostly focused on the affordable price range to keep it real. Hopefully these new contacts will help us all get the reviews we want to see and the products we want at the right prices too. Because in the future this new company are keen to get AAR on board to help give them feedback with the help of you guys and help them build the product range that you want to see. So naturally your continued feedback and comments are going to be vital in the future. Of course it goes without saying I still won't be paid by these people in order that I can keep that all important independence. One of the great joys has been the fact that we have over the last four years nearly seen a lot of new shooters coming into the sport following the beginner's guide videos we've done and again the new companies are keen to work with us to help these guys too. So quite a lot of changes ahead in the coming weeks and months. We wish Draper's continued success of course, however we are very excited about the future relationships to make sure we focus on the things that you guys want and to help build the sport for the new shooters that are coming in as well. If you start to see more new logos and products in future programmes, you now know why. We will bring you more news as soon as we can and probably introduce new companies to you all too. But for now, that's it. Thank you all again. And I'll let you get back to this week's review. Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. Some of my guns today, the FAC ones with the pros and cons, likes and any issues. They are in three different calibers with a wide range of power outputs. You see, I have a 
.22 calibre for most of the time, a .30 for longer distances and heavier hitting power, and then I have something I was told not to bother with by so many people, a 177 FAC. Were they right or not? Very quickly, for the new guys and our cousins over the pond, FAC stands for Firearms Certificate. And this is needed to have anything over 12 foot-pounds of energy here in the UK. Scotland is somewhat different though. But to get an FAC, you do need to have a genuine and valid reason and have it approved by the firearms officer. This will usually be for vermin control on bigger areas where a sub 12 foot pound is not going to be suitable. I use mine on anything from 8 to 800 acres of land, depending on where I'm shooting. So you're not likely to be granted one simply to take out a squirrel in the back garden of an average semi, as it were. The rifles then. First up, the workhorse, the .22 kicking out just under 40 foot pounds at the barrel. This is a Daystate Huntsman Regal. It is a traditional rifle design, or as my IT guy says, very old school. Probably. But this is very comfortable for me personally. And prior to this, I had a Viroc HW100T, which was about the same power, excellent quality and built rifle. But because it was an FAC, it was long and pretty heavy. So this day state was the lighter option and hence the change. You quite often find that FAC rifles are longer than sub 12 foot pound versions, or at least the air cylinder is somewhat larger. As on this Huntsman, rather than my 0.20 sub 12 foot pound version, the working maximum pressure is also higher at 230 bar as opposed to the 200 on the lower power versions. A quick overview shows this having a shrouded barrel and a Minelli stock, which is right handed, fitted with studs to take a strap for carrying this around, certainly when out and about. The trigger is adjustable and this has a gauge on the underside, which is nice and clear and easy to read. The barrel is topped off with a Viroc silencer currently, and it is usually my go-to silencer. I've tried several others on occasions, but this one seems to suit this rifle nicely and keeps the noise level down greatly. The filler is a standard Foster fitting, which makes life easy because that is always fitted to the bottles for filling up all my guns. The safety is a big, clear item and is operated using the thumb. And this is just perfectly placed to shoot in a thumbs up position. It's bolt action indexing a 10 round Daystate magazine, which is probably my favourite magazine, with its easy non pellet deforming loading system and anti double load, together with the last shot indicator on the side. Apparently, Daystate took a couple of years to perfect this. I only know if you have the pins in the right place on the back. The indexing and loading is easy and very efficient. I have this rifle topped off with the 5 to 30 times 50 MTC Viper Pro. Normally I would say my go-to scopes are Hawk scopes, but the turrets appeal to me on this one for the internal distance cards that can be slotted inside. These are really useful and accurate when used in conjunction with a rangefinder and it saves all the holdover and under business. Idleness on my part? Well, some would say it is. More speed and efficiency, I would say. The scope also has attached flip-ups with the rear doubling as a magnifier for the turrets. Is it accurate? Yeah, it is. 
and it has the characteristics of a good 177 caliber with very little arc because of the increased velocities the pellets are traveling at. It isn't too pellet fussy, but generally it prefers the JSBs in either the 18.3 grains or the 15.89s and really does quite like the new Hades, which is good news. And of course, the deformation of these is superb in this power level. I will be trying the FX hybrids in it in a later video. So we'll see what happens with those. I have tried the lighter 13.43 grains, but if you start to go supersonic, then the pellet starts twisting all over the place. So it's much better to keep air guns below supersonic speeds by having slightly heavier pellets. Let's take a look at the target work, shall we? Only 40 meters though, I'm afraid here, because we are in lockdown. And let's throw in power levels at source and at target. So, out at 40 meters, even with the lighter Hades pellets, it retained just under 21 foot-pounds or 28 plus joules. Has it been reliable? Well, I've certainly had more issues with this than I did with the Virarch. The trigger, bolt and safety are all interlinked in some way, and I was having an issue early doors with the gun firing when I changed the safety or it wouldn't cock properly. This had people scratching their heads. Well, apart from Carl, who immediately put this right after carefully balancing the trigger and safety, and since then I've had no recurrence of this issue. The other issue was of it clipping the silencer and losing accuracy, but this was due to the silencer thread adapter at the end of the shrouded barrel working slightly loose. A quick tighten soon cured that issue. And the only other issue I've had is around the pins in the back of the magazine. You see, even though the magazines are all the same, the positioning of the pins is different on different day state rifles. And after putting the magazine for the pulsar in here by mistake, I couldn't understand why the loading wasn't as smooth as usual. But lesson learned, and each one now has its own bag to prevent getting mixed up. Not the gun's fault, it was mine. Would I change it? To be honest, we're a bit of a team now, and we've taken so many pests together, I really haven't found a reason to split up the team. So it will be staying with me for a while longer yet. Next up then, the bazooka, as Mrs. A.L. calls it. The Daystate Wolverine .303. This is not a small rifle by any means. It is a beautiful thing, but everything about it hints that someone asked if they wanted to supersize it. If this was a McDonald's, this would be a Big Mac and Fries with a side order of another Big Mac and Fries supersized. It is long, even without a silencer at 110 centimeters or 43 and a quarter inches. So, put a silencer on it and it's going to be over 130 centimeters or about 51 inches. It is heavy at 5.2 kilograms with a scope on. 
The barrel is shrouded, but you wouldn't believe it if you fire this thing without a silencer. Let's just say you won't get a second shot off, because everything within half a mile radius will have either fled or gone to ground. The air cylinder is also oversized at 300 cc's and is good for around a dozen full power shots before it needs refilling back up to its 250 bar max and with the five round magazine is basically worth about two magazines worth give or take. You're also going to need a diver's tank or portable compressor because pumping this by hand is not the best plan you could have in the day. The ambidextrous stock is up to the usual day state quality but it is wide and has two thumbs up positions for left or right handers. The safety is just above here and is easily operated with your thumb nice and reassuring action with a clear red dot. The gauge is the usual Daystate one and is on the underside. The filler again is a standard Foster fitting. Just simply remove the dust cap at the front. The trigger is again adjustable as is the rear butt pad. The ammo in this is the .30 and is not particularly fussy on the weight using either the 44.75 grain or the heavier 50.15 grains. These will push the power out to around 95 foot pounds at the barrel and it carries a lot of that energy even out to 75 meters or more. At 40 meters it holds on to over 73 foot pounds or around 100 joules of this. Take a look at this video if you haven't seen it before. This does have quite a kick to it. <laughs> Take a look at this. I wasn't quite expecting that. I have topped this one off with a pretty large scope. It's a 10 to 50 by 60 Nico Sterling. Yes, it's a bit big, but as everything else was oversized, <laughs> why not? I don't often get it up to the planet spotting 50 times magnification because scopes have a tendency to start to go a little milky at that magnification. Is it accurate? Yeah, it is. Very. It does need a different skill set to a normal sub 12 foot pound gun because you are experiencing some kick and movement when shooting this thing. Oh, and the initial shock usually results in a poor first shot. So, some footage out and about at 40 metres. It is worth noting these bigger calibers are more expensive to shoot because the ammunition comes in tins of 150 and not the usual 500 and you are going to need a diver's tank if you don't already have one. Reliability? So far, so good. No issues at all. I have been told that the magazines are prone to fail on the .30 caliber after prolonged use. Daystate apparently are aware of it and took the approach that people will not use this as regularly or as often as, say, a .22 calibre. So they let the magazine go out as is. And they're probably right, because this isn't a gun you sit down with and put 500 pellets through in one session. Heck, you would need to refill it with air 40 plus times, which is a couple of divers tanks full, potentially. Why have it? 
Well, sometimes you need that extra distance and hitting power for the things you're shooting, and this is a terrific tool for it. It is a little heavy, maybe, but you never forget this is a serious piece of kit whilst you've got it in your hands. Would I swap it? Well, no, I can't say as I'm looking to. If I did, it would maybe to be something a little lighter and more compact. But when I use this, I'm not lugging it around. I tend to stay in one place. Finally, then, I have the gun everyone said not to buy. The BSA R10 Mark II FAC in .177 calibre. It wasn't the BSA they said no to, just the caliber in FAC. To some people, this is a bit of a Marmite rifle with the bottle sticking out of the front of the stock and the strange sweeping curve to the rear of the ambidextrous stock. I personally love it and the walnut is beautiful with the darker finish to the front and the bottom of the grip. The quality is excellent, understandable when you spot the telltale M of the Minelli embossed into the wood of this thumbs up shooting stock. This is lightweight when compared to the Daystate Wolverine at only 4.3 kilograms scoped and it is 110 centimeters or 43 and a quarter inches including the supplied caliber specific silencer long which is pretty effective the barrel is simple and not shrouded relying upon that silencer to do the work on keeping those decibels down the trigger is beautiful and fully adjustable. The air cylinder is perhaps a little small at 200cc capacity, but this has a maximum fill of 232 bar and is good for around 19 foot pounds at the barrel. And at 40 meters, it still holds on to nearly 13 foot pounds using the 10.34 grain JSBs. It isn't too air hungry either and is good for around four magazines of 10 rounds each before needing to consider topping up again. The fill level is easily read using the BSA gauge on the underside of the stock. Incidentally, you get two magazines with the rifle from new and the studs on the bottom are also fitted. Now recently I tested the BSA R10 TH in sub 12 foot pounds and I loved it and it is a high quality item and to my mind is worth the asking price of just under a thousand pounds UK and if it were in 18 foot pounds would be pretty much all the gun you would desire for target and small game or pest control. This is a traditional bolt action and is lovely and smooth. The safety is on the left hand side and again you can operate it with your thumb and is a simple push for fire, pull for safe and it's crisp and defined. This one is topped off with a favourite scope of mine, the 8 to 32 by 50 Hawk Air Max. Again, a little high magnification for some hunter's choice. But I always work on the principle, if you've got it, you can always turn it down. But if you haven't, you sure as heck can't turn it up. I also have a pair of BKL mounts on here too, which are again a personal favourite of mine. Why? Well, they are perfectly centred either way around. Take a look at this if you're confused about what I mean. Is this one accurate? Heck yes. Does it just suit me or is it easy to shoot? Well, let's give it to Mrs. AAR and see what she makes of it. Now, it's the first time she had ever shot this gun and it was as windy as heck. This isn't normally affected that much by wind, but it was a real windy day. Let's take a look.
I was pretty impressed. You know, this is the only gun I own that caused me to write to the manufacturer to actually say thank you for making a superb gun. This is capable of some serious target work, probably as a result of the combination of the excellent barrel and that extra six foot pounds or so of power. You know, it has to be said that I don't take up a placard and start protesting and forcing my opinion on the legality around air guns. The law is the law, and there are much better ways, to my mind, of trying to change laws if you feel it necessary. And we run with the laws of the land, whatever they are, if or until they are changed. Here comes the but. If I was ever asked, I feel the Spanish restriction of 18 foot-pounds makes a better and more accurate gun, giving a little more power to make a clean dispatch and enough speed to make it super accurate. And will be affected by wind much less, but without a huge increase in power to cause the potential for serious harm. Well, not really any more so than a 12 foot pound. But as I said, the law is the law and we should all respect the laws of the land and petition the lawmakers if we want to make a change. Anyway, opinion over. The point is, is an FAC and 177 at 19 foot pounds a waste of time? <laughs> Definitely not. This is my favourite of all three of the FACs I own, and I would only replace it with an upgraded version of the same thing. If I test a gun and feel I'm not getting decent results and wonder if it's me and not the gun, this is the gun I get back out and shoot to test my ability to see if it's me or the gun that I'm testing, because this is the most consistent rifle I own. I absolutely love it. Has it been reliable? Totally. Nothing more to say on the subject. I'm only surprised that there doesn't seem to be a lot of reviewers out there reviewing more BSA stuff. And I'm thinking of trying to put a review together of the range of BF BSA rifles uh -huh, all together. But again, the lockdown has prevented me from getting this idea off the ground. So, watch this space. Well, that's it. Hopefully this has answered one or two questions that people had around my personal guns. And you had three reviews all at the same time. As always, we've enjoyed this and hopefully you have too. If so, please give us the all-important thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share it and don't forget to hit the alarm button. Of course, if you want to know in advance what we're working on, then follow us on Facebook and join us at www.aar-onair.com and have a look at the host of things that we have available there. For now, though, stay safe, shoot safe, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.